Hello everyone, I'm here with uh, Spider-Man and the Avengers, uh, even St. Patrick and St. Francis of Assisi have joined me today because we want to talk to you about the book review. Alright, that's your final written assignment for this semester. And this is a very special assignment and there's a lot of things uh, going on here, a lot of levels. Uh, to this assignment and so I want to make you understand uh, what it is that I am looking for and how this assignment fits in with uh, church history and New Orleans Seminary in general. All right, so this is a very special assignment. Let's look at the parameters that are expected of you. All right, first of all, you're going to be writing a book review of Mark Knowles' turning points. All right, now this is the current edition, the third edition of Mark Knowles' turning points. But look here, here is the uh, second edition of Mark Knowles' turning points. You know, out there somewhere, there's a first edition of turning points. You are welcome to use any edition of turning points for your book review. Just simply make note of that in the bibliographic entry at the top of the page. All right, let's uh, see if I can uh, pull that up for you. Ah, there you go. Here is an example of a book review that I wrote for the uh, Journal of Baptist Theology and Missions. Uh, that is the uh, NOBTS journal. And so I wrote a review of a book called The Evangelicals. And you can see that I have at the very top line, I have the title of the uh, book in italics. I've got the name of the author. I have the bibliographic information, the place of publication, the publisher, and the date. Isn't that simple? It's just a, two lines of bibliography at the top of the page. That is an important element of any book review. All right, the next paragraph is a brief uh, biographical sketch of the author Francis Fitzgerald. All right, so what does that mean for you? It means that you're going to uh, give a cover page and then on the very next page you're going to put at the top of the page uh, turning points. Uh, decisive moments in the history of Christianity, uh, period, Mark A. Noel, period, and then uh, the publication information, all right? That's going to be your first few lines. And then I want a brief paragraph about Mark Noel's uh, publication history. Now, Mark Noel is a prolific writer. I do not want you to list all of his books because that would take up most of your book review, okay? Do you see how much I gave here about a paragraph? That's all I want about Mark Knoll. So just a, just a brief uh, outline of who he is, what he has done, and what he has written, okay? And then jump into the, uh, the book review itself, okay? Now, your book review is going to be six to eight pages long, double spaced, all right, so not terribly long. Uh, and let's see how it's going to be broken out. At least three of those pages, uh, could be up to four pages, will be a summary of the contents of the entire book, all right? Uh, you're going to uh, be looking especially for uh, significant individuals, movements, institutions, doctrines, and the history of Christianity, all right? What has uh, Dr. Knowles selected as important turning points and important people and events within that turning point, all right? So you're going to summarize the contents of the book, all right? You're going to discuss the general principles learned about the history of Christianity, okay? These are principles that all readers would glean from reading this book, all right? And then number five is an evaluation of an impact of this book and the study of Christian history 
on your personal life and ministry. All right, this is an application point. You're accustomed to writing application points for me because uh, it has been one of my goals for you that you find ways to apply Christian history to your personal life and ministry. So this is your chance to talk about how you're going to apply what you've learned from this book to your life and ministry, okay? Those are the elements of the book review. This is how you will be graded for your book review, all right? By following these five steps and being sure to include every element, especially the summary of the book, the general principles, and the application points. All right, now let me flip back to the uh, sample that I have for you. And notice that when I have a quote from the book, I quote the book here, and then in parentheses I put the page number from the book that I'm reviewing. Do you see this? See the parentheses with page numbers? All right, that's how you will uh, cite your uh, any, any quotes, and you don't have to use a lot of quotes or anything, uh, from your book. But I don't want uh, I don't want footnotes at the bottom. Those are uh, extraneous and not necessary because we know the book, right? We know what book you're uh, reviewing, and so all we need are the page numbers that you're citing or are um, um, summarizing for us. All right, so use that for your uh, for your citations. Okay, again, I've delayed the uh, the due date for this until November 15 so that gives you some extra time but uh, you need to use that time uh, partially to get your book review to the writing center so that they can review it uh, make some corrections and suggestions and get those back to you in a timely manner all right so I've come to a place where I need to explain to you two purposes for this book review. Well, three, including I want you to learn what the book has to teach you about a general survey of church history. We have looked at uh, just one part of church history for this class, but I want you to get an overview of all of church history, and that's what Mark Dole does such a good job. He selected 13 turning points from all of church history in order to help his readers uh, get a summary view of church history. All right, and so this is why uh, we have assigned this book review to you. All right, first of all, this is an embedded assignment. Our accreditation agency requires the church history department to select an assignment that summarizes all of our subject and to um, assign that to our students so that we can assess what they have learned about church history in general, not just uh, early to medieval or reformation to modern, but all of church history. All right, so in one part of uh, this assignment is an assessment of your understanding of all of church history. All right, so this is an embedded assignment. All church history students who take uh, uh, church history early to medieval have to do this assignment. All right, there is a second purpose uh, for this assignment, and that is it is a QEP assignment for the Writing Center. Five years ago, uh, the seminary was up for accreditation, and in order to um, improve our quality, to uh, we, this we uh, created a program, the Writing Center, that would be our quality enhancement plan. 
our QEP uh, task. And so we created the Writing Center and uh, in order to assess the improvement of our students' writings, every student in every department uh, submits a particular assignment to the Writing Center. We have kept track of all the students who have uh, sent their assignments to the Writing Center and have made improvements in their writing. And so we're able to assess the, uh, uh, the quality enhancement that's been provided by our Writing Center. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, but uh, we're really uh, at the end of uh, the, uh, the assessment period. And so we're moving into our last year of, uh, of this requirement to, uh, to, to run the book reviews through the uh, uh, Writing Center and assess uh, the quality of the program, all right? But nonetheless, that's the other reason why you need to do this assignment, send it to the Writing Center, receive back their corrections and suggestions, uh, make those improvements to your paper before you submit it to me, all right? Uh, because uh, the Writing Center and the seminary and actually your professor will be assessed based on your book reviews. All right, I hope that makes some sense uh, to you as to why you have a list of parameters, requirements, expectations in the syllabus on how to prepare your book review and then you also have a rubric in the back. If you complete your book review based on the expectations in the syllabus, well then you're going to have a good uh, review in the rubric. But the rubric is more of an assessment of my performance or the Writing Center's performance. The grade you get will be based on those, uh, those expectations in the syllabus and so you need to pay attention to those. All right? It's not as complicated as I'm making it, uh, but I just wanted to explain to you especially why it's important for you to send this to the Writing Center and to do so uh, in plenty of time for them to get it back to you. It takes them about three working days to uh, assess your paper, to make the corrections and suggestions, and get it back to you so that you then can make those uh, edits before you get it to me. All right, so this is coming due uh, on November 15, but that means you need to get your paper into the Writing Center by November 10th, and that's coming up pretty quick. All right, so I hope you have a productive weekend, and we need to press on to the end of this semester, and it's getting close. And so let's do our very best, and I'm going to do the same thing. All right, so... Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Bye-bye for now.